Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. That's good. I for today. Yes, me too. I think it's going to help a lot of people. So, yeah, I think so as well. Mike's going to do something. So, with your Zoom account, is it going to automatically have me like like the other Tri City Chamber ones that I've seen? So. I'm have to do some troubleshooting for the Facebook Live. It looks like we are just about ready to go. We've got no one in the waiting room anymore. And let's just make sure the Facebook Live is on. more in the waiting room. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, we've got uh, quite a few people on the line, and we are having an issue with Facebook Live, but we are up in the Chamber Facebook group. A um, little bit different than normal, but it'll, it'll work. Uh, we have a great presentation lined up for you. Angela is a great expert um, in mortgages, and she's really going to give us an update on the ever-changing uh, situation as we're facing COVID-19. Um, there is a chat room at the bottom, and in the chat, we will do um, Q&A at the end of the presentation. But as your questions come up, feel free to throw them in and I will read them out to Angela at the end and we'll make sure we address um, all of them as we, uh, before we wrap up. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, turn it over to Angela. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. I'm grateful to be here to provide you with some clarity during these changing times. 
And so I understand that everybody here is in a different life stage and we all have different circumstances that are influencing our lives. So I'm looking forward to providing you some clarity through that and walking you through. For the last 16 years, I've been privileged to be a mortgage professional and lead Canadians through the journey of obtaining a mortgage and helping them build their wealth as a result. And for the last 10 years, I have been a part of the Chorus Network hosting the Mortgage Show on CKNW. And in 2018, I uh, became the best-selling author of The Mortgage Code, which last year, all the proceeds went to Eagle Ridge Hospital Foundation. And this year goes to the Access Youth. So as I guide you through this, I want to let you know that um, I understand that mortgages are very personal and everybody's journey is different. And so I want to invite you to please reach out to me should you have any personal questions and we're happy to confidently and confidentially guide you through whatever is best for you. Now going right into the topic at hand, Mortgage deferrals are something that became available for us. And it is something that a lot of people are wondering, is it, how does it work? Who qualifies? What about my rental property mortgages? What about secured lines of credit? What about credit cards? What if I'm working during this? And what can I do? What should I do? Do I have a variable rate, a fixed rate? I've lost money in the market. I'm a senior. Uh, there's all these questions that have come up as a result and we're here to guide you through all of that together. We recently did a um, story for this on Global News when this came out. So I'll direct you to, to that interview presently. And as we go through that interview, I will then give the update in respect to uh, what has happened with that. Unfortunately, there's a short ad, but that has to happen with television. But from doing this, we've been on the phone daily with the presidents of the major financial institutions, as well as our senior economists. So we've had a really great view. And also the lenders have been absolutely fantastic in working together with us to provide us with the information on how they're going to handle things and allow us to be that frontline source for them. To date, 10% of the mortgages can you get volume on this? There we go. During this time of uncertainty with the economy and hard times for homeowners, the government of Canada has announced that it will be allowing some mortgages to be deferred. Joining me now is mortgage professional Angela Calla for more on this. And how does this actually work, Angela? Well, a mortgage deferral, if approved, allows you to delay your payments for up to six months. And so what happens is you are approved for that. And although you're not obligated to make the principal and interest payment, that amount will need to be paid back once the deferral is over, over the period of time that you have left in the term. So after the deferral, your payments will be increased and you're still responsible to make your property tax payments if your property taxes are on there and your mortgage insurance and everything else associated with it. So on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the size of your mortgage, how long your term is, will really determine for you if you're comfortable with a mortgage deferral. So it might not work for all people, but who actually qualifies for it? Yes, only people at this time who are unemployed and unable to work due to COVID-19. The lenders are adapting their policies daily and looking together on a unified response on how they can help Canadians. And so as we've seen this progress and develop, the good news is one lender came out the other day, Scotiabank, and said that regardless of occupancy for up to four Scotiabank mortgages, we will apply the deferral. So we're certainly hoping that other lenders will be able to follow suit. Other options that are out there is maybe able to re-amortize the loan. Maybe you only have 15 or 20 years left. You might be able to go to 30 years. So there's a lot of options that are available. But first, you should do is contact the mortgage professional to have a discussion about it. And then when it comes to actually getting the deferral, you will have to contact the lender directly. How uh, can people find out more information from you? If they go to our blog at angelacalla.ca, we have up-to-date information with how lenders are coming together to help, as well as our Facebook page, Angela Calla Mortgage Team. Please join us. All right. Thank you. So much uncertainty and a lot more to discuss, but that's all we have time for today, Angela. Okay. Excellent. Now I'm just going to resume the PowerPoint for you. 
Um, so moving through that, we've seen quite a few changes already that have come through this. So some lenders are automatically approving you for six months, no questions asked. Some lenders are only doing a month or three months and want you to reapply. On my uh, Facebook page, I do have a full and, and on my blog as well, but I'll actually I'll go to the one on my blog. I've got a full list of lenders that with all their phone numbers and email addresses. So if you want to call your lender, I just want to let you know that if you have questions about it, call us first, because if it's something as simple as reducing your payment, if you're paying weekly or accelerated bi-weekly, then that's something that we can help you navigate and that maybe you can do online that won't clog up the system. So when you are about 10 days out of your next payment, if a deferral is right for you, you can then make that change. Now, the reason why we're so passionate about helping you get Get the right information for you is that we want to protect your credit score so during this time if things haven't been modified accordingly um, you know we, we don't want this to impact your credit so anything that we can do to help you get in front of it is a great idea now you'll notice in that interview I also said that uh, mortgage insurance and property taxes also need to be considered well that's changing too. municipalities are putting holds on property tax payments they are um, freezing increases in some cases and some mortgage insurance companies also have a vacation or deferral option where in some cases you may be able to do that. The great thing about this is nothing is off the table. And as we continue through this presentation, we'll be able to see. And I'm so grateful for technology. Because of things like Facebook, we can give up-to-date information. Because of things like our blog, we can have future resources for you and we can get that out there very quickly. So please, if you're not already, I would recommend um, I would recommend that you are following our Facebook page at the Angela Callum Mortgage Team and um, know that our website is a great uh, is a great option for you as well. Now, one thing to keep in mind is we've seen every lender modify their policy. So for some lenders, what they're doing is they're taking what the deferral is and they're dividing it by the amount that you have on the term remaining to come into place right after the deferral is in place. So that will depend on where you're at on your term. Other lenders have just put the uh, remaining balance on the back end of the mortgage so your payments aren't increased. And in addition to that, we have some lenders where if the mortgage has newly been funded because some people have just funded a mortgage or been in the works of getting one together, that mortgage has been reduced to interest only for that time period. So I want to let you know, wherever you are in your mortgage journey, you will have a solution if you don't, if you need to reserve your cash and come up with one. And the solution that you might have today, even if you feel like, oh my goodness, I called my lender and I only got one month of deferral. Don't worry because the lenders are adapting their policy. And if you call them back um, at the time when is relatable to you, they'll be able to do that. The 10% of mortgages have already been deferred and the phone call volume is coming down as the lenders are coming up with automated uh, policies for that. So we also heard me touch on rental properties. So each lender has a guideline in respect to how many mortgages they will allow within their institution. And that's why you hear people wanting to integrate all into one lender or want to have everything with one lender. But this is why another reason that we talk about in my book, The Mortgage Code, it's good to really not have an emotional attachment to your lender. You really have to look at what policies are working for you at that time, because some lenders are only allowing up to four properties. So if you have a rental portfolio and you have three with one lender and four with another, that good news is all those mortgages have the opportunity to be deferred. Whereas if one lender has too many mortgages with you, they just don't have the ability within their capacity to provide so much resources for one person. So in times like this, we really like to reinforce that it's about who's got the best option for you at the time and not having all your eggs in one basket. Another thing that I would like to clarify is the government has been uh, very forward in trying to help tenants throughout this time period as well. Um, but I wanted to bring you over to Landlord on my blog as well. We have Landlord BC and Landlords in BC has come out with, it's very important to 
while we do have a rent freeze and while we do have a freeze on evictions at this time, it is important that um, you know that there are resources. As we've seen, we have a full list of resources on our website as well, where it shows that there is a rental supplement of up to uh, $500. But um, while the rental supplement is designed to help renters pay their rent during this emergency, renters will be responsible for any outstanding rent owed after the state of emergency has ended and any costs that are related to that as well. So it is important to keep those lines of communication open. It's not, it doesn't mean that these tenants won't have to pay rent, but we just are all in this together to communicate and, and work together on that. If you uh, own a rental property or you are a tenant and you really want to find another resource on how you can keep up to date with those aspects, then I would really recommend um, reviewing Landlord BC. I have worked with them in media to um, help gain clarity on this. And again, all those resources are on the website. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint now here as well. And all of these resources that I have, if you are in a business of helping people through this, if you're privileged enough to be in essential service in the front lines and people are asking you questions, please let's make sure that we get them the right information. So feel free to take anything off any of the resources that I have here for you. Another, oops. Another thing that I'd like to talk about is secured lines of credit. What experience has demonstrated to me is when we're in a financial environment where rates drop rapidly and the banking system has to change rapidly and they have to look at the cost of funds and they're in an environment where deposits are reduced, this is when the financial institutions look at where they have the ability to protect themselves and how they're going to cost things. So the last time that we saw a financial environment where interest rates were reduced very rapidly, if you remember 2008, if you had a secured line of credit on your home, you quickly got a letter from your financial institution that said, your line of credit is now prime plus one. If you don't like it, you can look at your lock-in options or put this into a mortgage, but effective the next date, this is what's happening. So here we are, fast forward to 2020, and still we haven't reduced secured lines of credit in most cases back to prime where they were, you know, over a decade ago. So they, they did come back down a little bit, but the lenders have the right when it comes to lines of credit to really change things on consumers. So being proactive and wanting to protect you through this, if you have a large utilization on your secured line of credit, you really wanna make sure that you're in a position where you can make your minimum payment because for whatever reason, if you don't have a plan in place and you do miss a payment, they have the right to change that payment to make it 3% of the outstanding balance. And they also have the right to call it in. And what experience has demonstrated to me is if we have the opportunity to get in front of it, evaluate it, see if that's still the best option for you, um, you might wanna look at doing a closed variable at that time to protect yourself if you can amortize it over a longer period of time. So the lenders don't have that variable contract to change things on you. So we really want to be proactive. We want to let you know what lenders have done in the past. I can't guarantee that that's something that lenders will do again, but because we have the experience of seeing how it has been, we want to protect you and locking in a rate into a fixed rate or variable rate mortgage might benefit you financially and protect your credit or refinance may benefit you. So in addition to that, a lot of people, it's, seven out of 10 Canadians are living paycheck to paycheck and seven out of 10 Canadians are ca carrying credit card debt and credit cards are the most profitable aspect for any lending institution. So we're very pleased that this is actually the first time in history that we've ever seen credit card companies willing to come to the table with a solution and some financial institutions are offering relief. Um, so I do again have this on my blog at angelacala.ca, but we have interest rates down to zero in some cases. We have deferring minimum payments up to six months. We have some institutions that are reimbursing 50% of credit card interest. While we have the time, while you're safe in your home, um, take the time and look through these aspects. And as I continue here, I'm gonna show you some more ways that you can save some money. Um, with this, if you are somebody who's working through COVID-19, being proactive to protect yourself is how do we build six months of living expenses set aside so you're not living paycheck to paycheck? 
This is a great time for you to look at taking out some equity for emergency funds and not putting yourself in a position where you will be having payments outside of your mortgage that could be impacting your credit negatively or that have the ability to shift on you and change their terms, which can make you vulnerable in terms of credit and being able to, to make your payments. But with this in place, everybody has come to the table with something. We've seen BC Hydro come to the table with benefits. We've seen Fortis BC, we've seen ICBC. And what we put together for you very quickly and for the, the purpose of this um, presentation today is we put together a budgeting during our state of emergency. And throughout this, we have a full list of if you're applying for EI, what you need to know. The most important thing that we need to reinforce for people as we're going through this is often EI benefits are not being taxed for income tax. So while you're going through your budget, you'll want to set aside a little bit of money from whatever is coming in for anything that you receive from EI because they're trying to get it out right away and they're trying to get as much money in Canadians' hands. It's just not being taxed at source. So you'll definitely want to do that. Here we have a link for the lenders for the mortgage de deferral program. Again, feel free to contact the mortgage provider contact your broker first or ask if we can help you with a question and then we can guide you through what might be the best solution for you. There's lots of other options to potentially delay payments so we wanted to guide you through that. We've got information here for landlords, information for property taxes, information for hydro, car loans are even offering right now to take deferments as well, um, insurance premiums. Again, the reason why we want to get this information out is we want you to be in front of it because we don't want this to impact your credit negatively in the future. Um, so we also have how to manage strata meetings. We, we put a, together a bunch of resources here on that, but also what we've done is we put a printable PDF or an edible spreadsheet of a budget that you can work on. And so what we have learned and what experience has demonstrated to us is it's not until we kind of go through the experience of going through our bank statements and knowing what we're actually paying out every month so we can find an opportunity to save. So with this, we've put together a bunch of fixed expenses that most people have. And this was kind of just done within the last week to try to find different ways. So you could look at if there's anything that you could potentially pause, if there's anywhere that you can reallocate for emergency funds, or if we look at some of the debts that you have outside of a mortgage and look at if there's a better way to do things to protect you and help you. We have um, that resource here for you to utilize to help you move forward. So going back to the presentation now, a lot of people that have mortgages want to know, well, what do I do? Right now, if you have a variable rate mortgage, this is your time. Sit tight, enjoy the low rate mortgage. Lenders have dropped their prime. The reason why we have this noted here is the lenders are not obligated to move their prime consistent with the Bank of Canada. And in 2016, we saw that one lender had started the trend with creating their own prime rate that was going to be higher than what the other prime rates were. So. If history has a way of repeating itself, and if you look for patterns and financial things, or if you look for things that could happen in the future based on some of the uh, diversions that are happening, happening at the moment, we want to be aware of that. We want to know who those lenders are. We want to protect ourselves and have that information at hand. But it is very possible we could see another decrease from the Bank of Canada. So if you are in a prime minus anything, this is your time. Take any additional proceeds and allocate that to um, a savings, allocate that to any outside debt that you have. But if you have an existing variable rate mortgage, I would absolutely not recommend locking in at this time because we are in a market where fixed rates are moving higher. This is done for several reasons. One, the banks are attempting to slow down activity because earlier in the call, we talked about them having 20,000 phone calls a day. So they are reallocating people that were in underwriting, that were in payments set up, and they're just trying to deal with things at hand. Also, with over a million people applying for EI, the banks lend money based on how many deposits are in the bank and deposits are down because less income is coming in, less, less income is there. So when they're looking at their cost of funds, in addition to the bond market, generally we don't see as 
large of a spread as we do today. But as things normalize, we will see things normalize at one point. While we can't pinpoint exactly where that is now, we will see things level. So, um, you know, we generally will want to watch that. And if you're in an existing fixed rate, if you're at anything 3.5 or above, it's time to review to see if there's a better option for you. And when you're looking at what mortgages you want to get into, people still are buying real estate. People were in the process of buying real estate at the time when this happened. And these things are still moving forward. Um, the most important thing you want to have is flexibility above all else. What this has demonstrated to us is we're all aware right now with what's happening that we want to be with a lender where the penalties are going to be minimized. So you have access to that as a Canadian. So we want to ensure that you use that. And a variable rate, uh, while the spreads are higher right now, you, you can take reassurance in knowing that you can go into a fixed rate at any time and you will have the smallest penalties should you need to make a modification. So when you're looking at maybe taking that fixed line of credit portion and you want to go into a fixed rate but you want to wait till things normalize, you know, you can have the confidence in knowing that you can lock that in at any time. And there are uh, a multitude of lenders. So before you make any borrowing decision right now, you want to make sure that whatever you're doing right now will set you up. So should you want to make changes down the road as things normalize and as things change, that you can do that. There are a lot of people right now who uh, seniors are struggling because in addition to their CPP, in addition to their OAS, their investments uh, have gone down. And we do know that investments will go back up and we do know that they have the ability to modify their portfolio. So one of the best utilizations right now, which is getting the most amount of um, applications is a reverse mortgage. And we're going to be doing a segment on this on Global News in the next few weeks, but a reverse mortgage is not considered income. So the Prime Minister yesterday said that he was going to be working on some aspects for uh, seniors and students to help them through this because he knows that, you know, people that don't receive pensions have been investing in the market, but now that's down as well. So the best thing about a reverse mortgage is there's no payments that are required and it's not considered income. So it'll give them time to continue to live the life that they've worked so hard for while continuing to allow their investments to rebalance and move forward. So, you know, we're really passionate about educating financial planners about reverse mortgages. Um, we're really passionate about educating banks because they're not offered at bank branches, a lot of bank managers need to know that this is an option that can be provided for people who can't meet stress test requirements, who, who are not getting the income to qualify for mortgages. So reverse mortgages are one of the best assets and they've really developed a lot over the last few years. They now have a lot of more people coming to market. They're available for anyone 55 and over. And they're also a great tool to help people through divorce because economically, what we can be, what we can count on is there's going to be a baby boom. After this is all over, we're going to see a baby boom in December, January, February, and we're also going to see the increase in divorces. So there are tools that are available to you that whatever life stage you're in right now, there are so many options that are out there. So don't limit yourself. Make sure that you work with an independent professional to utilize those options. So uh, we also have an app that you can get um, on the app store and that's also on my website. And um, we will update you with the global news interview once we do the reverse mortgages. And we wanna let you know that we are considered an essential service. It is business as unusual, I like to say, because we're such a family oriented company. We love to meet our clients in person. We love to you know, we love to be in person, but right now we're over, uh, we get to utilize technology and you get to have the safety and comfort of your home. So the great news about contacting us is we're not getting 20,000 phone calls a day. We're generally working with people within our community. So mortgage professionals are here on the front lines. We have a front line to the decision makers within the lending institutions. And if you're feeling frustrated or you're not getting the answers that you want, we can help direct you and help push those things forward. So you can be safe and you can confidently know that we have the ability to get things done for you very quickly and very efficiently and at the most 
beneficial way for you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email us directly. My website is being updated with all the information as it becomes available. And thankfully, as a result of social media, um, the Mortgage Team Facebook page has been such a great tool to be able to help set people at ease. And as the lenders have been changing their policy, as they've created these automated ways for you to get answers, we've been able to update you. As they've been changing their policies to help with rental properties, we've been able to update you. And um, fortunately, while this pandemic is something that obviously we hope to never repeat and we have never seen, we have seen similarities with previous financial markets. So when we talk about ways to protect you, all those and more, and the why behind everything mortgage in terms of how lenders are looking at borrowers is included in my book, The Mortgage Code, which all the proceeds go to access youth. So I wanna thank you for investing the time to learn how we can empower you and take whatever opportunity we can to give you some comfort and help you thrive to the best of your ability during these times. Thank you so much, Angela. We do have a couple questions in the chat from Christian. So um, we'll start with how, how is making a deferral going to impact credit? It's not going to impact your credit negatively as long as you have had the deferral approved before, like you, you can't decide to you can't not make a payment and then get approved for the deferral after. So the deferral has to be approved, but it's not going to impact your credit negatively because it's something that the lender has agreed to. And that's why we really want to ensure that people are taking the steps. They're contacting us. They're contacting their lender to make sure they know their options. Awesome. We Did had I another, question? sorry, go ahead. Uh, we had another question that was, uh, sort of answered, but in case someone else missed it, could you go over again the fixed versus variable and how we and why we should not lock in at a variable right now? So if you're in a prime minus with a variable, this is your glory day. This is your time. You are getting, you have a record low interest rate. You're getting so much principal into your mortgage. And right now, because of this snapshot in time, interest, fixed interest rates are totally inflated because the lenders are trying to stop the flow of business coming in. And because they don't have the deposits on hand with so many people not working and the business deposits paused, they are costing their funds much higher and they have a much higher pad than what they normally do within the range. So if I would take any proceeds that you have uh, with your variable rate savings, and I would apply that to any debt outside of your mortgage and having an emergency fund. Um, so things will be able to move forward. And also we could see another decrease from the Bank of Canada. It may or may not be passed along, but if you're in a variable rate, these are your days. And if you have a fixed interest rate over 3.5%, it's absolutely time to work the numbers to see if it's worth it for you to break your mortgage and take advantage of lower interest rates now. And once this is behind us, we do expect based on how history has demonstrated itself with previous financial markets and especially what we have as a reference that's relatively recent in 2008 is that the spread on the bonds will will tighten once deposits get back into the bank once people return to work and once business gets slowing again okay thank you you're welcome we also had a question come in on facebook excellent um, i have a scotia step mortgage scotia step I yep i me too Awesome. I have around 20K in additional credit available. In the past, I have had to go into the branch to make that amount available on the HELOC. On the HELOC, yeah. How do I do it now? Do I have to sit on the extra long hold with all the people looking to defer, or is there another way? Um, if you go to the Scotiabank website where it is COVID, um, the, yesterday, what one of my clients told me is that they just sent an email in and it was able to be approved. They did have to wait about three to five days to get the email back, but they did get it back and they did get the result that they want. So definitely email. You want to have, I really would like to encourage anybody who's watching today to protect themselves by getting an email from their lender. Phone calls, things can be misinterpreted. We're all under stress, things are changing daily. But if you have an email for your records, that will help minimize confusion and you'll be able to save that. And should there be 
any kind of questions at a later date, you can always kind of refer back to that because you know, we all have to work together with kindness. Things are changing. People are human. They can click a wrong button um, and we'll want to watch our credit reports, which Equifax throughout this process has agreed to give free credit reports to Canadians at this time. But, you know, if we have that going back to Christian's question, if your credit, if they accidentally if they accidentally reported a missed payment when they had already approved the deferral, well, you have that letter and now you can take that letter to the bank and ensure that the bank in conjunction with you have that corrected on the credit report. So that's why my preference is always to get an email from them. And another helpful hint is that we had a client who had been, who had sent an email, hadn't heard anything within 12 days. They messaged them on their Facebook page and they got a response within a day. So Facebook is such a great utilization tool. And so not only do we encourage you to you know, follow us, but follow your lender on Facebook. And if you're not getting the email response, you know, feel free to also message them on Facebook because that's been a successful method of communication for a lot of our clients as well. And again, it, it is in writing. Awesome. Thanks, Angela. You're welcome. Um, and that, the last question it looks like is, can a reverse mortgage be stopped once investment portfolio bounces back? Well, reverse mortgages are very dynamic and they have the ability to do quite a few things. So first of all, you can get one large lump sum. You can get a monthly contribution that's delivered to you every month, or you can get a combination of the two. So they can be, the usage can be for a variety of things. Maybe you have a bunch of outside debt or you've done a home renovation, so you wanna get one part in a lump sum. And then instead of taking money out of investments for income, which you're taxed on, you can take the money from the reverse mortgage and you can stop it at any time, but once you have the lump sum or once you have the money, it is what it is. So you can't, you can't reverse that but at the end of the term, you could definitely pay it out, but it does provide spousal protection. They're not income taxed. And so if there are any benefits that are available to, from the government, you will get those in addition to being able to have your home equity working for you and having your investments bounce back too. So they can be utilized as a wealth building tool, but they, you know, Canadians are highly uneducated because not a lot of people have really gotten to understand how they can work and use them to their advantage. So I'm very happy that the um, lending institutions that are providing this have come to me to be able to help Canadians with clarity on them. Awesome. Thanks so much, Angela. Is there any last questions before we wrap up? It looks like we addressed them all. Um, and again, I'd like to encourage you to please send me an email if you send me an email, then I can have you on our newsletter list. So during when everything hit, we were probably sent four emails throughout that week. And for the 10,000 people that we consult on their mortgage, they were very thankful to have that information and be a little bit at ease as things were coming. So if you want to get on that list, make sure you send us an email so we can get you on that newsletter list. And um, of course, answer, answer any personal questions that you have or if you have an association or group that would benefit from getting this information from the source to share with the people that you care about, uh, we could put something together to help you. Awesome, thank you so much, Angela. Thank you for everyone being here today, whether you're on Zoom or Facebook Live, we appreciate it. We have a number of other upcoming events. We're doing our first virtual happy hour today at four o'clock to kick off the long weekend, so join us. I know everybody's self-isolating and uh, lacking human connection. So this we're is also going to be putting in our order for Pantina at that yes. time because that's when they open. So I've got my clock set to put in my order. So our proceeds go to share and we get to support that local business as well. Perfect. And maybe CEO Michael Hind might drop it off at your door with contactless delivery because he's driving around tonight. Oh. Hope to see everyone tonight and if not, enjoy the weekend and stay safe. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye.